Keanu has been mm -hmm. making some incredible plays from the captain position. Uh, it really, like you said, just top to bottom, full team effort. Crack stepping up big on a lot of these assassin type heroes. Tetno JJ holding it down in the middle. Just absolutely phenomenal performances all around. Yeah, and Crax was one of those question marks coming into the tournament. Yeah. We weren't sure. Was he going to be a guy that was going to be able to step up? Was he going to be a liability? We've seen him feed once on Anka, given that, you know, that wasn't <laughs> so great. But other than that one performance, he's been a guy that's done great. Let's get ourselves into the first game of the loser bracket finals. It's Clash against Tribe. Lyra going to be taken off the board right away. So not really a big surprise there. It's a hero that has been targeted quite a bit by Clash throughout today. And Yates, of course, uh, it's pretty surprising whenever we see Yates get through the bands. Yeah, Yates, the, just the ability to yank someone out of safe positioning is just so devastating. All these captain players at this level know how to combine it with the stun. When you get pulled, unless you're a tank, uh, you almost in no scenario are able to get out of it. So very, very interesting. Clash is going to go for the Anka ban. going to be interesting to see how Tribe responds. Yeah, they obviously, uh, you know, now you start looking at, do you go for the Lorelei? Do you take her off the border? Do you, does that slip through and potentially get picked up? You know, a lot of teams have kind of been foregoing picking up these strong captains for their first pick because they have been putting so much of a focus on getting a carry with their first pick. But Lorelei is taken off the board. So I like this, seeing both Lorelei and Anka taken away before we even get going. Clash hovering that kinetic. We've seen kinetic with such high priority down for that bot lane. Just that weapon power laner, absolutely devastating. He's very mobile. He has a lot of range. He's able to stack in the back line and just continuously harass the enemy team from start to finish. But again, I don't think that it's necessarily a bad thing for Tribe that Kinetic is getting taken away. Even though they won with Kinetic in that game three, I still stand by that they are a stronger team with Silvernail on Old School as opposed to this Kinetic. So uh, Arden is going to be picked up. Obviously, amazing hero. Whatever role you put him in, he's going to excel. I think that's a great point, and I actually think that that is a huge benefit to the side of Tribe is it? They're one of the only teams that really places a high priority and emphasis on Silvernail and also execute him at a very high level. I don't know other teams necessarily do it that well. So I do think Tribe is very comfortable allowing that kinetic pick to go over to the side of Clash and just putting old school on a Silvernail. Yeah, and, and it's one of those situations where the only, like, when you don't get that kinetic, uh, if you're another, a different team, no one else plays that silver nail as well as old school does. So it becomes almost a liability if they pick up the silver nail instead against Tribe. So uh, right now it's going to be that scarf coming through once again. Could very well see that end up in the jungle like we just saw in our previous game. But Finn going to be grabbed here. And now maybe Clash going to take a page out of the Tribe's book and grab themselves that Celeste. Interesting. I think if you know if, if I'm Clash, I would have recognized that Tribe not having any success on the Celeste, Tribe even deviating to start picking up mages that are not Celeste, and I almost feel like that was a forced pick to try and deny it from Tribe. I, I don't know if that's necessarily the priority pick for the side of Clash. Now these two teams have scrimmed quite a bit, so maybe that plays a little bit of an impact, but I think one thing that's really interesting is that Turnwalker is still on the board. Yeah, he hasn't been picked up yet. We're getting pretty deep into this draft, too. Uh, could very well see him come out as this next pick for the side of Tribe, but they already know that Finn is on the side of Clash, so Turnwalker not likely to be picked up. They could save it for their last selection if they really want to, but it's uh, it'll be interesting to see if they do. Because now with the Adagio and the Arden, I don't really see Tribe grabbing the Turnwalker either. Yeah, definitely interesting to see how many times Turnwalker's been banned so far today, but it doesn't look like he's getting scooped up. In this draft, Tribe with the Adagio and the Vox, two heroes that they have played very well so far today. Chuck in that game number two against Nova stepped it up big time on Vox. And with the way these picks are shaping up, it almost seems like T-Tigers is going to be back on that jungle scarf, which I actually really liked in the last game. Anara, though, jumping onto the Sovereign's Rise. That's a pick that we have not seen yet today. I was actually going to comment on it. Like I was looking at available heroes. You know, We were talking about the Celeste and like who can dive onto the Celeste. And I realized we haven't seen Anara at all when she was so popular on 3.8 and didn't receive any changes on 3.9. I was really strange that we haven't seen her up until this point. I think she's a very strong hero and provides so much movement speed 
to the team, very much like the Flicker uh, in that aspect. But there's the Silver Nail for Tribe. I love seeing that pickup come through. Likely now to be the uh, box for Chuck in the mid lane. And then that T-Tigers will then be able to take the Scarf into the jungle. So I, I actually really like both of these compositions at the moment. Yeah, and Silver Nail 2, one of those heroes that actually does particularly well into Inara. It shuts down a yep. lot of her mobility. She can't go flying through the tripwires, and, and that's got to be an advantage for the side of Tribe. Yeah, there was. I remember there was one instance, I think it was during VPL All-Stars, where we saw Old School on the Silver Nail had like three people running at him. It was a flicker ultimate was used, trying to get to him. The first person becomes visible, he immediately just throws down the ultimate, knocks the entire team into the wall, and just walks away. It was literally a three-on-one gank, and he just casually strolls away from it because Silvernail can just prevent those hard ganks so easily. Summon up this draft, try it and trude for Tribe Gaming going back to the Silver Nail. Clash doing some innovation first time we're seeing Inara, and my favorite part, I touched on it before we went into the game. No Anka, no problem, so they ban it out themselves so Crack doesn't get his hands on it and accidentally <laughs> feed his, uh, you know, behind <laughs> off. Either way, we're getting ourselves ready for the first loser bracket finals match. It's the Cinderella story clash against the reigning champs, Tribe Gaming. And man, they were almost out. They get a. Uh, one more reprieve here and have an opportunity to right the wrongs and work their way from the loser's bracket with Team Ace sitting in the wings, watching patiently and learning and doing a fantastic job of that. You see on their faces, everyone looks relatively calm, cool, and collected. Clash for a team that has been sitting out for a little while seems relatively docile, ready to awaken and uh, pounce onto the enemy tribe gaming. They're not afraid of any accolades. They're not afraid of any world champs, Max Green and T-Tigers. It's just time to get into the game. Clash, European champs against tribe world champs. Guys over at the caster's deck, give us your energy. Take away the game. Let's go. Elimination match number two is underway. Clash up against Tribe, North America up against Europe. And according to the bracket, Europe are the favorites. Let's go. I mean, so <laughs> many people doubted that Clash could be in this position going up against Tribe. Tribe starting to build some momentum, but going up against this Clash squad that has renewed signs of life. This oh, is yeah. anybody's series, and I'm so stoked to be here casting this one. I'm so hyped for this one. And I, I was watching Tyra's in the player cams, you know, leading into I mean, who this was one it? on the draft. That guy's eye candy. <laughs> it's difficult not to. It's it difficult is not really to. hard not to. But he was kind of almost meditating. He kind of had his eyes closed, had his hands together in front of him. It looked like he was praying almost. Maybe he was. He may well have been, honestly. And this is a huge moment for Clash because no EU team in the history of Vainglory has taken more than one series so from an international team. Dare we say that Cracks was the key? I mean, <laughs> Cracks comes into this event, no live experience, and he's cool as a cucumber. Look at this dude. He certainly is. He's been doing excellent work as well. The anchor maybe leaving a little to, uh, to be desired, but generally speaking, he's been doing a fantastic job. I was actually asking Tyrus about what he thought of Cracks joining the roster, what he thought of his new top laner, and he was saying, this guy has serious potential. He's been training hard, and he knows exactly what his team needs him to do. So I'm excited to see that continue to come on in. Up against Max Green, though, that's a difficult opponent to live up to. Yeah, it really is. Um, but these guys, they all have ex experience. Oh it's just how well they can all put it together. And, you know, dare we forget about Tetno JJ here in the mid lane. You know, this guy was the all-star player yeah. uh, for Fnatic. If we go back in time a little bit, he, he's impressed us so much over the years. And he's really showed up here in this Invitational. This is anybody's series. Could go either way. I'm guessing this goes all the way. I certainly hope so. It would... Uh it would be something to behold and clash. Behold me. It, honestly, even though they came from the upper bracket, it still feels like a difficult match for them. Let's be honest, like it, even the EU fans at home, I think still, you, you almost have to, it, it's difficult to temper your expectation here. It's very easy to uh, get giddy and get ahead of yourself. If they're up this late, there's no tempering expectations that's very at true. this point. That's very true. They are all in. Unless you're watching the VOD, uh, and if that's the case, nice to see you. 
Yeah, thanks thanks for joining us in hindsight. Appreciate that. Here we go, though. Keanu Nakoa on that fin. We've seen Keanu actually has been playing exceptionally well across the course of this tournament. I've been really impressed by his play so far today. And to be honest, I, can, I expect to continue to be impressed because yeah. he has never been an inconsistent player. He's nope. always been one of those that just always performs. He definitely has. Uh, as soon as Keanu came onto the scene from the first game I ever saw him in, I was really impressed. I think the first time I saw him was on Rising Lotus back in 2016. <laughs> he was playing jungle. Uh, and I think the first game he ever played was a talk, and I was just like, he was the most slippery talk I've ever seen. He switches into the captain role eventually, and he's just performed so phenomenally well in this position. Yeah, unbelievable player. And, you know, he has a lot of history behind him as well. As you mentioned, he goes way back, but also goes way back with one of these teammates, Hundor. He was the captain that would keep Hundor alive in so many games. That old G2 roster, it was all about Hundor. It was protect the carry. Yeah, Keanu that hyper was the one carry. shouldering that way. It really is. And well, it looks like Chuck might be first blood Whoa. in the mid lane, and indeed he is. Nice rotation from Tyrus into that mid lane, getting work done. Yeah, really quick rotation. Just easy kills coming on through here. Hundo wants another one as well. Max Green has to boost out. Yeah, he has to boost himself out, but now that's going to be on cooldown, Munch. That's a really big deal, and it looks like Hundor and Tyrus in position to take this turret, potentially even a kill. They're going to need a rotation, and the rotation is here from Gabe Vizzle. Sniffing it out, the communication's there exactly as we would expect. Not only that, more reinforcements. They bring in T-Tigers. We saw them do this before exactly as they needed to execute. If they did not make those rotations, that turret's down, maybe even Max Green falling. And you even saw Max Green again trying to make that bait. He did it again against Nova and it worked multiple times on Truth, but doesn't work this time. He doesn't manage to force the fight onto Hundor. And everyone gets away with their lives. We'll see what Clash are gonna do with the small advantage that they've managed to glean. Well, five minutes in, River Shops have spawned, so we'll see a couple item pickups here. Nothing really out of the ordinary that I'm seeing just yet. Everybody just trying to build right into their weapon or crystal paths, respectively. But definitely on this bottom lane here is where we're going to see this pressure coming out. They want to get this turret so they can start to rotate across the map. Man, I'm, I'm still on an adrenaline high from the last series. I just want to see team fights already. <laughs> I'm just ready for, <laughs> ready for the late game, dude. I'm trying to like skip it forward a couple minutes right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. <clears throat> no, but we got to get the build up here. You know, it's it's all it's all about uh, you know seeing how these guys get into that position so we can really know you know did they deserve this? And of course they're just they all deserve to be here playing. But do they deserve these victories? Are they performing to their maximum potential? Tyrus no. got the jump, banishing Beautiful. kick, knock back exactly how you want to see the Inara played and the wait for it thrown out at the end but it's not going to be enough Gabe Bissell boots will be on cooldown as they lose Chuck in the mid lane putting Clash up 2-0 when Tyrus is going to play this Inara like that how is it not already been played today how is it not already it. even over how I, I don't understand why this is the, <laughs> this is the first time we've even seen it in a draft it wasn't even banned and then Tyrus I comes in and he's like, hero. I'm just going to force two kills super early in the game and start to get this snowball rolling. Maybe that was Clash's plan. They were like, look, guys, okay, all right. So we're going to drop to the lower bracket. We're going to go up against <laughs> Tribe. Once Nova's out, then we pull out the Inara. Then we just start kicking them around, dance all over the Leafs, baby, and have a good time. But Clash looking really strong here in the first seven minutes of this game. Tribe definitely not out of this at all. Oh, it's no. just a couple <laughs> kills have gone if, the way of Clash. If the last series tells you anything, it's the Tribe are never out of it. Game number three of the last series against Nova. I cannot believe that they still managed to pull that I blacked that one out. Off. I really can't remember much yeah. of it. All I know is that Nova didn't find the W and Tribe is now facing up against Clash here. And I mean, man, I don't envy these players on Tribe either because they have to run the gauntlet now. They have to win. They've already won one series in the lower bracket. They then have to beat Clash, and then they have to go into that grand final up against Ace. Yeah, you can't forget about Ace here at all. They've been chilling they've, for they've a been, while They've now. been chilling, but Sully still working hard. You know, he oh, has yeah. to be scouting out this Inara and be like, whoa, maybe this is a potential pick that we grab. Oh, Max dropping low. Maybe it's something we grab, or maybe it's something that we're going to deny away against the squad if this is who we face in the finals. Whatever the case is, there are benefits and negatives to having to run that gauntlet. Absolutely. Old school, gonna be able to finish this turret off in the end. Actually looking for a kill. Ooh, nice shield. Comes through from Cracks, good use of the flask, but that's a second turret already for Tribe up in that top lane. 
they, they're down in kills, but in terms of map control, they're doing amazingly. Yeah, old school about to get wrecked here. <laughs> he just gets popped. Yeah. That'll go to Tetno. Solar Storm right on point. Oh, he oh, walks oh, into oh. it. Portal wound, and Tyrus is there. They've got the kill that'll put him up 4 0. They've lost two turrets in the top lane, as you said, but they've done a great job to stall out the pressure in the bottom lane. Max Green with that Vanguard keeps himself alive. And Clash, like, how long is it until they're going to take this turret? This, you know, this is the one that we see fall around yeah. that five minute mark, six minute mark, so many times. Dude, Tyrus is on an absolute roll right now. He's yeah. all over the map forcing these kills, but they're just not able to turn these into objectives yet. But if they can get that gold lead, turn it into some items, maybe that's their way into the game. So Tetno JJ really just starting to hit his power spikes here as he's going to be able to overdrive that Heliogenesis. Now he's oh fighting goodness. from range. And this is where Vox is going to start to struggle a little bit. As long as Tetno stays at range, just kind of chip damage with those Helios, makes them go supernova, doesn't get caught, he can do a, a lot, a lot of work. And you can already see him doing that here in the mid lane, forcing Chuck out of the lane. T-Tigers actually has to rotate in just to hold the wave so they can't take that mid lane turret. But a two turret advantage is definitely a significant one. And Tribe are the ones with that in their pockets. The question is, where do they rotate now? Are they going to look towards the bottom lane next, or are they going to try and siege here in the mid? Uh, it's going to be bottom lane. They're going to look for kill on Max Green and push the turret. I see Tyrus rotating down with Hundor. Well, it, it felt like that was going to be the move, right? You clear the jungle into that bottom lane onto the solo hero. But the movement does appear to be coming into the mid lane. There is a scout cam from Tribe, so they'll see an approach from the river. Tyrus will have to be sneaky. And thus far, he's taking the correct angle. Skiani will have his pull up. He does indeed. They have engaged potential, and they're going to go into a defensive position up against uh, Tribe for the contest on this Crystal Tramp. Looks like it should be theirs. I don't think Tribe forces the issue here. Well. We're not, I don't think we're going to see a team fight here just yet. I've got a question for you, Humanist. Did Tiggs just steal that? Uh, yeah, yeah Tiggs yeah, just stole did. that. Yeah, he did. Classic Tiggs, am I right? You're not I wrong. I, I have a question for you, Humanist. We just yet one? to see a Bennett kill here today. Creation made sure of that earlier on. Who's going to be the first one? Who's going to be the one to snap? There's it? not going to be a pinnacle today. It's not going to happen like that, my man. None of them. No, it's the. I mean, you're asking for the, the prediction, and I guess it would. You know, I guess if I'm going to play along with this one, I would. Uh, the pinnacle would come out of the Chuck. Chuck would get the pinnacle. It's going to be Tetno, my friend. He's been quiet all morning. He's been brooding. He's been watching. He's been waiting. Is that what you do? This you just ask me. Is his like, moment. <laughs> who's going to be doing X? You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this is the answer. You set yourself. That did you know? That's a that's a common thing in psychology. Did you script if the someone thing? asks you something, they yeah. usually want to be asked themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Fun we'll we'll come back. People will forget about that. I'll ask you the question, uh -huh. and you get to say the answer. Uh -huh. All right. Well, these teams continue throwing blows. Tyrus able to knock himself back into a safer position as that damage was stacking up. He wants to port back, but this is a dangerous position to be in as Ghostwing is on the menu. Tribe hungry for some dragon. They're in position. They know the Clash have an idea. This is really dangerous. This is a game of controlling vision. Tetno JJ has to stay at range. Max is really low. And you see Chuck is really forcing the issue from the top side, but because he has that sonic zoom ready to go, he can dash back into a defensive position at any moment. Oh, so this is scary. Played really well. Forced Accord can change everything right here from Keanu if it's not blocked. But once again, we've talked about this. Gabe Bizzle, he ain't gonna miss one of those blocks, or at least you'd hope not. Yeah, I mean, I, up against a player like Gabe Bizzle, you almost have to throw it where he doesn't have vision on yeah. you, and even then, he might block it still. Uh, which just make, it makes it so much harder for Keanu. I, I feel like against a player like Gabe Vizzle, it's no longer about reactions. It's about mind games. It's yeah, about yeah. trying to outplay them, not do it predictably. It's like, uh, so there you have some uh, disables that typically you want to throw after, but sometimes you have to throw them first just to force out that Crucible yeah. and then go with the Force Decord after. We might even see double Crucibles. In fact, they do have double Crucibles up right now. Max has one as well as Gabe Bizzle. So they have the double block and that's exactly what they need. I love the way these teams are just dancing back and forth there. They both know that a fight could happen at any moment. They don't want to rotate to the sidelines in case that happens, but neither of them are willing to commit and force and engage right now. We are going to see Tribe of the Ones that end up splitting up. Gabe? Oh. 
is going to be able to dodge away from the root, and he'll be A-OK. -okay. A-OK, -okay, yeah, Cracks almost fa uh, landing that root, and shoot, Clash in one of these positions where they found themselves in before. Gauntlet comes down. You that's don't want to focus Max Green down necessarily, but that's their only option. Ooh, Solar, Solar Storm! Storm. Oh, nice! Damage comes through. The Dance of Leaf from the huge. Endara. Yeah, yeah they're splashing on through. Versus Judgment from Gabe Vizzle. They've oh, controlled it. Lord. Is that three? That's four down. Tribe, absolute control. But Tenno JJ, yeah, he's still alive. Careful. Kite back. Come on, Tenno. I want to see it. Make the plays. You can't. The thing is, energy. It's four versus one, but you can't take the ghost. We don't let that Spitfire hit. That's not what you're trying to do. Tetno, what are you doing, my man? He's going to get flanked. That Gold is not coming your on jungle. In. Silver now, they found him. Tetno will pay. He's but still alive. He's, he stalled out the Ghost Wing attempt. Where's his team? Where, how long until his ultimate? Because he could actually beat them right now. It's very possible if he lets It'll be after spawn. the respawn munch. Because right. he walks into the turret. There's nowhere to go. I thought, you know, maybe you buy enough time, your team can kind of flank, and they oh. get into that kind of pincer formation. But ultimately, Tribe taking a serious advantage. I was that five kills for them there? Was that four or five? Uh, it was five in the end. That was a full full wipe. I want to No, they already had a kill, I think. I don't know. I've lost track at this point, but you know what? It was a wooden fight, and that's what matters. Ghostwing never got taken, though, importantly. So it was just gold going the way of Tribe. They didn't manage to turn that into an objective. So Clash, still going to be even kills-wise. So, oh, that's going to be another kill going that way as well. Nice little pickup there for Cracks. Yeah, that was just some erasing of Chuck on the rise as he's in the wrong place at the wrong time. The Clash, they find themselves a little uh, Black Claw love up here on the top side of the map. It's 6-5, we're 14 and a half minutes in. And while they might not have got the Ghost Wing, they will be getting the Black Claw. And uh, I'd rather have this myself. Well, when you've got a whole five-man squad to push on through Dang. and you're able to deny Dang. the Ghost Wing. That's what I'm talking about, Clash. Honestly, the macro play out of this team has been impeccable. It's today. been great, it really has. But now they're in the position where they could almost play themselves here. They have to be careful. Don't get overzealous. This is where you can be, you get into these throwy uh, pushes, and you can almost feel it right here. They're very far forward. I want Tetno to keep that range. Don't allow them to engage. Oh! oh no, here we go. As soon as you Goodbye, say it, cracks. the fight comes on Yeah, T-Tiger is like a thousand judgment. miles an hour. Tribe looking for a secondary or tertiary kill. Hondor stays alive. Can't Clash turn this around? Anara able to find Whoa. the kick to knock him off. Oh, the Spitfire! Oh, the dog. Perfect play coming go through. T-Tigers! Oh. <laughs> did he have like one one health? Oh, I mean, my like, Lord. Keanu's still there. <laughs> I, what is happening in this game? That was an insane fight for Tribe. I mean, uh, these teams... <laughs> This is just crazy to say. I, we couldn't have had this conversation six months ago, three months ago. People just wouldn't have believed that this is what we would be seeing here in this moment. Clash and Tribe actually completely evenly matched here in this first oh, yeah. game. It, it's just crazy. Toe to toe, head to head. These guys are matching one another. Importantly, Clash actually did get two and three quarter turrets there in the mid lane. It was a phenomenally successful Black Claw push from them. But now with the Ghost Wing in their hands, they just won one team fight. Tribe are poised to take more. They're poised to take more, but there's no Versa Judgment. There's no Gauntlet. Dragon's Breath is up. They're pushing their advantage here, but Clash hanging back, not going to put themselves in a position where they can be engaged upon. Two turrets drop in the bottom lane as Tribe has a successful push. They're going to look to maybe, yeah, there's no jungle for them to clear out. They'll be happy to clear it out on their way uh, towards the side of their their map, but, you know, nothing home, so they won't be taking it. It's probably around the next Black Claw spawn where we'll see another major engagement like that, but this is just on a knife's edge. Yeah, honestly, yeah. really nice from Tribe. Get the Ghost Wing, force an objective immediately. But unfortunately for them, the minion waves weren't in the right spot. You've got both in the mid and the top lane, the minions were pushing in favor of Clash. So they just have to go clear that out. And you can see the Ghost Wing buff has only got about a quarter left. It is going to time out before the next team fight. So we're back at even Stevens. Once again, the gold is barely different at this stage in the game. 17 minutes in, we're starting to get to this team fight stage, and it all becomes about the Dragons. It really is. Honestly, like, so we know that T-Tigers is playing a carry hero in, in this Scarf, but maybe in a lot of cases you would look towards Chuck to be applying more damage, but Tix is just playing lights out right now. I mean, every Spitfire he's throwing is landing. 
And that Dragon's Breath coming down in the team fights is enabling yeah. his team so much to chase forward, to get into the proper position. And we'll see what they can do here as Clash look to make a push in this top lane. And it looks like it's going to work out. Very, very late recalls coming out from Tribe. It's yet another objective going the way of Clash. Very nice play coming out from them. But can Tribe punish in any way? And I don't think they even want to. It doesn't look like they even want the fight right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, based on their movements, it felt like they, they were kind of just looking for a straggler. They were like umming and ahhing about it. They were yeah. like, do we go for it? Do we stay back? But the, the thing is, is like while they're hemming and hawing, they have the proper heroes in the proper position. Max is yeah. in the front line here. Yeah. Max has Gauntlet. So that will be, you see Gauntlet go down, that means Tribe's going to go. You're going to see the Dragon's Breath wind up, and then it's just go to town. But Tribe, they're playing safe. They're playing patiently. And this is exactly what they need to do right now. I mean, that was kind of the problem for Clash earlier. You know, they are maybe playing better than they expected to be. And then you make a play at the wrong time. Black Claw has landed on the map. And both of these teams know that this is the objective to fight for. Look at this positioning from Clash, forcing them away from the Black Claw. They say oh. used to, oh, look at the hook. T-Tigers has scored. So much damage coming he down. He manages to make it out. T-Tiger stays alive. They got two trapped inside the gauntlet. Clash, can they keep Cracks alive? Oh my Cracks Lord. able to reposition. Polite company from Keanu. Only lands on like one of his allies, but Tetno JJ, full health, stays alive on the back lines here. Did both teams blow their foundation? They definitely yeah, did. Yeah, absolutely. Look at how evenly matched these two teams are. Tyrus uh -oh. is trying to keep his carry Tenno, alive. Boots Tenno's on cooldown. Silver down is on this Tenno. Perfect play from Tribe. Now they have the advantage. Now they'll go for the go swing. And once they have this, they can take anything they want on the map. Is Tyrus going to look for his still here? This would be a really crazy go. play. Super aggressive. Oh, it. no. He wishes all of EU Cracks. wishes they could have that one back. Give it to me, Cracks. Not uh, gonna be there. Not gonna be there. There's no no flash X plays happening just yet. <laughs> could have been glorious, but I want to highlight old school right there because he knew he could take out Tenno. Had his reflex available, manages to block away from that stun and gets that one v one, and that was the difference maker in the fight. Turns it into a ghost wing, and now a black claw as well. This could be Tri poised to take the win. I mean, this is Tribe poised to take the win right here. And uh, Silvernail zoning back. Oh, okay, 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 old school. We see you flexing over here. Now, old school, historically, he was known for like his Vox, his Vox play, his weapon Vox. It was, it was just out of this world. And it's when he hit his power spikes, he turned it up to 100. You know, he's sitting back, he's farming, he's taking the safe plays. But once he hits that power spike, he's going to go. He's going to run right at you, straight at the throat. And you can see right now, he has hit that point. He's completely zoning his opponents out. And this is awesome. Now the Black Claw marches on in and clash. The drums of war are banging. And it's not Clash that are banging him right now. Here we go. Walks on in, and we'll see what Tribe want to do with it. They're going to push with the Dragon, not choosing to split on this one. The side wave's not favoring them. Stakes down from old school, making it hard to approach from the bottom side of that base turret. Looks like Boots Ford Clash wanted to engage, but yeah. that felt super confident. And uh, I don't know. I, I don't see them winning that fight, even if they did find the engage. I think it was a bluff, you know. You I think, think so? it was like, a, let's pretend we're going to engage, because We'll force the war treads coming out from our opponent. We'll get them out of there. And just allows us to go up into these side lanes, clear away a little bit, reset the map somewhat. Yeah, but uh, actually no boots even forced out on the side of Tribe. They yeah. really know that they're in control of this game. They got back-to-back -back fights. They take Ghost Wing, they get Black Claw. Everything kind of falling into position for a Tribe victory in game one. But let us not forget Clash coming back yeah. in their earlier series yeah. when it felt like they were down and out, when they couldn't even uh, they couldn't even speak, not oh, even their own cracks. language. Uh, oh, looks, he's I in mean, trouble. You see, old school, he's going to just run at people now. He can burst folks down incredibly easy. Clash would love a fight in this jungle right here. If Techno JJ can just mash out those Helios, get the supernovas onto everyone, that is the perfect scenario for Clash. The difficulty being against old school silver nail you don't really get to cast many abilities in the jungle because those stakes are going to silence everyone no and he's got so what he does is he's got these journey boots his, tier, his t3 boots so he's going to boot at people he's going to chunk them down they're down to 50 percent health and he can back up and then he does that 12 seconds later this guy he's going to run at them every single time and if you get one hero down 50 percent uh -huh. hp your team can follow he gets a vanguard gauntlet comes down they, and they're then playing you drop exactly, the solar storm. <laughs> exactly how they need to
posturing aggressively once again. The Crystal Trent. We'll see who's going to get it. Old school going on in towards Cracks. Nice little drop down. Is he going to be able to survive it in the, the answers? Choke no. Hello. That's a wait for it on three. Now Dragon's Breath burning them down. Have they gone too far? Yeah, they did. Clash gets the return kill. T Tigers punished for getting too aggressive there in the mid lane. Remember that turret is down, but Clash Ooh. onto the back foot. Just, it just <laughs> is like a cornered animal right now. This game is so good. These teams are so close to one another. We're seeing these fights back and forth, but it keeps on consistently being tribe that control the map afterwards. They get yet another neutral objective, yet another ghost wing buff. The question is, how many buffs does it take to close out the game? I don't know, it's like, uh, how many licks does it take to get to the middle of the Tootsie Pop? You know, like, this is the question. It's, uh, 124. It, it's one, two, crunch. So they got one, the Ghost crunch. Wing. They got the Ghost Wing. It's going to be the Black Claw and then the Death Ball push down the mid lane. I mean, that's how it feels like this one's going to play out, but yeah. you can't count this Clash Squad out just yet. I think a lot of this rests on Keanu Nakoa right now. If he can make a play, if he can find a pull, maybe... Go for something like a party brush. Go for something crazy. These straight up team fights have not been going so well for Clash. They need to find a different route, but it's difficult in this situation. Hondor is not with the team right now. He needs to get over to his squad. Uh, and he will in due time. Uh, approaching from the top side of the item shop, he's going to rethink things. They need to allow Techno to start getting some damage down. It feels like we haven't seen the impact. There's the pull. There's the pull. It's. The, I think the block came out. It wouldn't have landed uh, even if it was on target. Yeah. A little off target, but Black Claw down about 50% HP right now. This is a dangerous position for both teams to be in. And we're now at the point in the game that you were talking about earlier today. That pull has a shorter cooldown than the block does. So the fact that this fight has reset, the fact that Tribe didn't keep pushing, means they could find this later on. Tyrus gets There's away with his another life. Another Crucible on Max Green. Remember, Max Green was one of the best captains in the world. If we go back He was the best time. captain in the world. Yeah, 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 true. We can call it just as we see it. There are two fountains, though, on the side of Clash. So this could pay Look at Hundo more right dividends. Now. Oh, still so nil. Blown up. Solar Storm down the choke point. Clash have advantage. Have it? Techno JJ's doing it right now. He wants to stay in position to land the Helios, but he can't be in position to be taking damage. Clash have forced Tribe back. They've taken out Old School, one of the most threatening heroes on this roster. And now, All right. on to the Black Claw. We've seen Black Claw throws already today. This could be another one. This was how Clash ended up in the lower bracket in the first place. Techno dishing out the damage, but the health bars are low. Chuck has so much AoE Ooh! damage, but it's going to be the kill. On to T-Tigers. They're chasing down Chuck. Get That's em! a double kill Get going em! on through. Max Green's going to fall as well. Unbelievable performance from Clash. EU through the roof right now. Exactly the play they needed. They're looking for... Are they going to close this game if out? This is are ace, they going to go end this it. game right now? They get the ace. The Clash, through. take the base turret. They're in the base. They were on the back foot. Tribe was one team fight away from closing oh this game out. Oh my days. This what? is unbelievable. What? Old school. What goes just down. happened? This is going to be right Clash. Here. One zero right up against right Tribe. Now. Clash. Down, but not out. You can never count this squad out. Oh my goodness, that just happened. What an unbelievable game we just witnessed. We were saying it all along these teams, head to head, toe to toe. Unbelievably close match. And you can see the devastation here on the face of the tri Ooh. players. They thought they had that. I, I mean, people at home thought they had what that. What is that? I mean, yeah, people were probably like sending out congratulatory cards and everything, but they're going to have <laughs> to cancel those. Rewrite your letters. Man, Clash have to be on just cloud nine right now. Uh -huh. But it's not over yet. They still got to get another one of those done. Bear in mind, 26 minute slugfest. Degon, wow. Flash Bacon, please break that one down for us. Thank you very much, guys. Ooh. Is there a doctor in the house? Someone needs to put Humanus's brain back in his head because he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's insane stuff over here. And it's the right amount of energy, especially for a back and forth game like that. Let's take a look at uh, the replay here. Flash, like, what are your thoughts in this crazy, crazy game? Phenomenal, phenomenal stuff out of the side of Clash. I mean, 
I yeah. doubted them. Everyone in North America <laughs> doubted them. But, you know, they came in. They held their head, heads high. Series is not over yet, but, I, I mean, what they've been able to achieve so far, they should be very, very proud of themselves. Yeah, I mean, this game looked like it was going to be Tribe taking it home. They had such a big lead, but Clash just holding on until they can find their fight. This is after they had already picked off Old School to be able to go close this one down. But that one pick, all they had to do was if they took out Old School, they won the fight. And that's what they were able to do. You take it right there at Black Claw. It, you know, it, it takes some gall here to make that call because the casters touched on it. This was the last, flat, the last fight Clash took against Team Ace when they were in the lead. They went to Black Claw and they go back, exercise their demons and take the victory here in game one over Tribe Gaming. Great stuff. I, I mean, they've got the momentum now, but you know, we said it in the, in the Tribe versus Nova yeah. series. Tribe is in their comfort zone now. We're in his dark time. <laughs> so for the third time now today, I, my money is still on Tribe, but oh, God. <laughs> so I have to come back to the desk if hey, I'm let's, wrong. Let's, let's re-roll that a couple segments. I think you said you wanted to throw out a, a sweaty tweet out there about NA being greater than EU. Well, we did. Uh, Clash, uh, yeah, Clash is just absolutely shattering the paradigm that was created. Yeah, for sure. I, hey, I, I didn't get clearance on that tweet, so I, I, didn't, I didn't put it up. But <laughs> Yeah, we'll yeah, no, this has been absolutely incredible from Clash. Again, nobody except for them expected to be doing this well. Uh, we see Hundor, his profile there. He was a stud in that last game. Absolute monster. Just all the damage he was able to do from the back line on the Kinetic was absolutely phenomenal. So Hundor, again, one of the top players coming into the tournament. And everyone, when I asked, who's your top five? It was like, ah, you know, if there's a six, I'd put in Hondor, but I don't have any EU players on there. Hondor showing up huge, finally in that final fight, finishing with a 5-1-1 one, one, uh, stat line there at the end, and pushing Clash over the edge in a game that they almost had no business winning for quite some time. Yeah, I mean, they started off incredibly strong. Like, I want to talk a little bit about Tyra's as well on the Inara, just finding kill after kill after kill in the early game. Things slowed down real heavily in the mid game, but then they were finally able to get that, you know, closing team fight. But Tyra's got them off to a phenomenal start in that game. All right, Mr. NA, you're a coach of Tribe Gaming now. What do you tell the guys? Hey, we had that one, we threw it away. Are you revamping the draft fully? What are your thoughts? <laughs> It's hard. Uh, it's, it's so hard. Um, I mean, Clash has definitely shown that they have a lot of cards. They're, they're yep. comfortable on a lot of different picks. And when you are going up against a team like that, it is very hard to make those kinds of decisions. I still don't want to see Chuck on Celeste, despite Clash having success on that hero finally. I, I just, I don't, it doesn't feel good necessarily in this meta, so it's, it's very interesting to see what they're gonna go with. Well, Clash has rung the bell. Tribe now, will you answer? Down 0-1, tournament life on the line yet again. Let's get into the draft of game two. Churnwalker does get banned away this time. We saw him actually go through the entire draft last game, not get picked up at all, so Tribe decided to take him off the board, wanting to leave one of those other priority picks available. They do ban away the Anka, let's see. Will it be the Lorelei that gets left through? Will it be the Arden that gets banned away? The Flicker or the Lyra will be the one that Clash decides to take off the board. Very interesting. Lyra gone, Yates gone, Churn and Anka. These, all four of these heroes have just been power picks, but with Churnwalker going all the way through the draft in the last game, I find it very interesting the Tribe still decides to utilize one of their bands. I think they do it because they wanted to keep one of these other power band, you know, picks that gets banned all the time open, like the Lorelei. Getting a Lorelei first pick, I think, is massive for Tribe. She is such a dominant hero in these nitty-gritty team fights in the jungle where Clash seems to really excel. Lorelei shuts that down. Absolutely, and it's a hero that gave his plays exceptionally well, or Max Green, we've seen it a little bit up in the top lane here today, so that is another option too. But it is because some of these backline squishy heroes have been dove upon that having that water wall available, so key. Yeah, with a Lorelei, I suddenly become a little bit more okay with uh, Tribe deciding to put Chuck on the Celeste, because now you have the tools necessary to help keep the Celeste alive. I mean, Gabe Vizzle last game 
was already doing phenomenal work keeping carries alive. There were a couple times where T-Tigers was completely caught out on his own and somehow Gabe Vizsla and Max Green were able to combine to keep him alive. And it, it, that's just the strength of this tribe squad. So they can go for this like all in protect the carry sort of composition. Yeah, and these two heroes definitely it, it absolutely the best at, at making sure that is able to happen. So it's going to be interesting to see what tribe ends up going with. They're hovering over the Fox. You know, Chuck has seen success on it. He saw success on it in Westy. He's seen success on it here earlier today. It's just, I don't think it's his strongest hero. I, I think he's much better on other heroes. But, you know, you, you have to make a decision. You have to go with what your team thinks is best, go with what your coach thinks is best. They definitely have confidence in Chuck's ability to play this hero. Chuck needs to have confidence in his own ability as well. Yeah, it definitely is a, a situation where you just kind of have to, everyone just has to step up a little bit. It's not just, it's not like there's one player that's been underperforming or anything like that. It's just as a team, you just need to come together as a unit and everyone needs to play just a little bit better. Definitely agree. Clash hovering over the taco. A hero that was buffed a little bit here in update 3.9. I would be shocked yeah, if Clash decided. That would be a big surprise. Okay, yeah, yeah. So they, they are going back to the Inara. Hey, it worked well for them in game number one. Why not go with it here in game number two? It's a hero that even Tigers plays exceptionally well. I've been surprised that we haven't seen him on some of these early game aggressive junglers that he is so well known for because so many of them got buffs here in update yep. 3.9. Koshka, Taka, Glaive, the Grump Jaw, just all of them. The Koshka is one that has actually very much surprised me. I'm, I thought we were going to see Koshka pretty heavily in this tournament. She is really, really strong on 3.9. But with the Flicker and the Lorelei, those are two very good counters to the Sonara. Sonara is all about the movement speed, all about the mobility, and those two shut down mobility so incredibly well with their slows. Very interesting choice by Old School, opting for the Sky here in the do or die situation. I actually like it quite a bit. He's going to be able to dance around that scarf pretty, pretty effectively, and hopefully Tribe will find success. Yeah, it's really the question is going to be, can he avoid getting stunned by the Kinetic, rooted by the Malin, stunned up by the Finn? If he can dodge those, then he's going to be in a great position to carry this game. We saw how aggressive he was positioning towards the, down the stretch in game number one with the Silver Nail on someone who doesn't really have great escape. But now with a Sky, you can dance around so effectively. Like you said, you can position super aggressively and still get out. The adaptation of the draft continues. Sky now thrown into the mix for the first time. Tribe Gaming, we said it once, we said it twice. Here we go, elimination game. Do you have the answer to EU this time? It's Clash against Tribe. Back into the fray once more. Tribe against Clash. Clash 1-0 up in the series. But Tribe, they're no stranger to the reverse sweep. They did it in WESG. They did it in the first elimination match. Let's see if they can do it all over again. Definitely a squad that's capable of making the comeback happen in a series. But Clash, they have done it time and time again. They've had comeback games, comeback series. I'm so impressed with this squad right now. And I, I actually, I, I'm kind of uh, a, in opposition to what Flash said. I think this Weapon Sky actually worries me a little bit. Yes, the mobility is there. Yes, the damage output capability is there, but it's such a squishy hero. And if you look at what they have, you know, you're gonna have to protect Chuck at some point. The Flicker is gonna look to get some disables. Yeah, you have the Arden. Yes, you have the Lorelei, but th these heroes are really hard to protect. They really are, that is absolutely the truth. And I, speaking of truth, he was on the sky earlier today, nope. and it just didn't really seem to work out for them. Who indeed? We'll have to see if it's going to work out for uh, old school in this one, but Hundor on the Kinetic, however, has been having a whale of a time. Absolutely loving this pick, and it's been doing <laughs> wonders for it. Okay. So T-Tiger is an old school on the opposite side of the turret. A little proxy farming, and yeah. they're zoning Cracks away, so there's no way that Cracks gets any last hits. He's denied experience even. All right, well, we actually have Hot Sauce standing by once again to talk us through a little bit about what the mentality is like on Tribe right now. Over to you, Lucy. <laughs> Oh, hello! We're just chatting it up right here because uh, with Hot Sauce, the coach of Tribe Gaming, once again. Okay, 
The, pro the issue here is we are now in a third game elimination yep. situation. Yep. What have you told the guys to pump them up to get them ready to try to take this win? Again, you know, we're just counting on our experience to help us. Uh, it's been a really steep learning curve for us. As you can see, we lost a lot of games early on. Um, but, you know, we think we've made the right adjustments and that just be confident in that and confident in their ability. I think that they're, you know, they're capable of beating anybody in the world, most skilled mechanically and team fight wise. So uh, that's basically what I've been saying to them. All right, well, it seems to be working. So let's hope it keeps on working. Good luck. And we're going to set it back up to the guys. Capable of beating anyone in the world. That's the words that are coming out from Hot Sauce. And well, it worked out for them in 2017. Right now, they are on the cusp of elimination, but it's still very possible for them. Yeah, I mean, okay, I mean, a lot of things are possible, but you got to make statements like that. You got to show up here. Yeah. And uh, up against this Clash squad right now, I just didn't see it. Yeah, Tribe able to, to put Nova down, but. This is a different story. They're down one game, and this is an uphill battle for them all the way. Yeah, we've got to see some magic if Tribe are going to make it to the finals right here. Ace, by the way, have been living it up in the meantime. They have been chilling on these seats, the comfy audience seats downstairs. Yeah, they could have gone to the beach for yeah, a while. They're, I mean, they're just guys... relaxing, a couple of pina coladas. Yeah, not too many. You know? <laughs> not too many, not too they many. Take a light on that. But Enjoy the LA life for a little while. Yeah, the LA lifestyle. But, you know, honestly, <clears throat> these guys are hanging out here. They're watching these matches. They're studying. Sully's making the notes. The players are resting up as needed, and uh, they're ready to go. I'm sure they're itching to get in there and play some games. But for now, Tribe versus Clash. Tribe will have to play this to perfection, yeah. but I just hope that they don't get into a position where they play defensively. Yeah, and don't forget, guys, as well, we are going to have our exhibition match following this series, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. should be a whole lot of fun, but it does mean that our finalists will get a little bit of an opportunity to take a breather. They're not going to be forced to jump straight on into that final, so it will be a nice even start to things for them. Always try to give teams a little bit of a break, you know, as oh, yeah. they get out of that last series and on their way into the finals. There's always one team that's had quite a bit of time to just kind of chill, relax. You always just, you know, for fair play, you try to give that over to their opponent. Down in bottom lane, old school and Tiggs able to take this T1 turret down. They've done a great job. If you look on the top lane, though, we're not seeing that really mirror effect happening for Clash just yet. Not just yet, we are seeing a ton of minion candy though coming out from both sides. Everyone just forcing these lanes on through. Still not to get visible, but no one going to follow up on anything really at this early stage of the game. Like you said though, turrets still remaining so far. Aside from the first one that Tribe took earlier on in the game, generally speaking, it's been a pretty slow start. Yeah, it's been a pretty slow start, I think, for a few of these games. And it's because of these these teams, yeah. they're very clean rotations. Uh, we've, we've seen these team fights where heroes get down 20% health, 10% health, but they juggle the damage so incredibly well that not actually anybody is dying. So maybe there's one, maybe there's two kills, uh, but they're just playing to their potential right now. And we'll continue to see this. Yeah, Tribe up 2-0 in this game right now. We're almost six minutes into it. Clash has been on the back foot consistently. There's the Ooh. pull. We'll look for a little three strike reposition. There you go as he dances back. You're going to have to instantly blow that sky up if you get that pull. Tix eats a little bit of the damage. That's the juggle right there, and they're right back out of it. Yeah, they managed to get away with their lives, but it's going to relieve the pressure just a little bit in that bottom lane. It will mean that they can push out once again. Cracks can kind of grab some CS without that constant harassment coming out from the likes of old school. Honduras got his first weapon item completed here. We'll see, we see Spellfire completed for Tetno. So everybody's starting to get their first T3 items completed as far as the carries go. Uh, looks like Storm Crown for Tyra. So he's looking for just kind of clear, a little bit of burst damage, and a little bit of a wild card with this build. Yeah, I'm curious to see how he does choose to continue building that one up. Tetno JJ with the Spellfire dealing a whole ton of dot damage, but the fountain's starting to come through, which means in these team fights, there is that kind of 
guardian angel resting over these two teams. We've seen that so many fights across the course of today, people get out on the just minuscule slivers of HP, and that's all due to these fountains. Yeah, it is, and we, we've seen actually, well, Clash was the team I think that's done it the most, the double, oh, hold that Ooh. thought. Ten, no, it is gonna be his boots on cooldown as he's able to slip himself out of that one, but Clash was the team building double fountain, which I think they built that in the late game, Maybe a factor in how they caught their opponents off guard and made those yeah. comebacks happen. Yeah, absolutely. Hondo is going to be able to walk away fine, so I'm going to stop talking I about it. I love how that became uh, a question like halfway through Hondo, his name. Hondo! Um, but one thing I want to mention is how much it sucks to play Scarf early when you only have your first item. Every time you goop, you basically run out of energy completely until you finish that second time, until you get some of that energy regen in your bank because up against the likes of a box as well who just has to do a resonance every couple of hours it's so <laughs> difficult to clear the waves comparatively yeah it really is and you can see look at the resonance bounces going off of the fin here onto the anara jumping in look for the kick back it's gonna be the kick lorelei in trouble splashdown giving the move speed fish food lands wait for it comes the other way two from clash dropping low the jump forward by the bucks but not able to finish anybody now four from tribe in the mid lane as they smell blood and maybe gonna look for a push here yeah, nice little play coming out from Tyrus, but it's not quite enough to turn it into anything significant. Hundor in a 1v1 against Max Green. He's got the minions on his side and he had a flask. It's Max Green getting baited this time. The block just get it. comes through. Come on, Hundor, get it! He'll get the turret. He's going to go ahead and show mercy to Max Green. Hundor the merciful, we will call him yeah. in the future. That was close, though. I, I wasn't sure if if uh, Hundo was going to push for more. Had his boots available, he actually could have tried to force the issue, but I think didn't know where the opponents were, didn't want to force anything. Right now, it looked like it could be a turret being forced out in the mid lane. Well, Chuck's going to go ahead and back off of that. Swing and a miss on the Forced Accord. Keanu's going to have an 80-second cooldown in which Tribe can be a bit more aggressive. Look at that jump board. CP Fox flexing up on the Malin here and doing a great job at that. Wave clear once again coming out from Techno JJ. Very easy to just wipe out those minion waves, especially when the captain minions aren't in play. But this last wave should be just about enough to finish off the mid lane tier one in favor of Tribe, which is going to be their second turret of the game. And now, look at what's Ghost Wing. Yeah, they're two for one on the turret takes thus far, setting them up for Ghost Wing. But Clash know exactly what's happening. They're going to look oh, to get a position, but Tribe, a very quick engage going the other way. Hundor erased off the map. Someone hit the delete button and he was gone. Tribe lose nobody. They'll just jump right back onto this Ghost Wing. It should be an easy take for them. I don't see Clash going in with four heroes here. That was like something straight out of the playbook right there. Yeah, exactly. You, you start the Ghost Wing, you bait them in, hard engage with the Moon Cloak, Get the gauntlet down, easy peasy, grab a kill, grab a dragon, grab some objectives. Guy yeah, and the war treads on in there. Also, Munch, I want to mention, look at this. We uh, we have three crucibles coming up. Max Green Crucible, Gabe Vizzle Crucible, T Tiger is Crucible. It is it's gonna be so tough for these guys to land any major stuns or, or debuffs on this team right here. Yeah, full on triple support here for Tribe, and it's all on the shoulders of Chuck and Old School. And let's bear in mind the carries they have, Sky and Vox, impossible to lock down, impossible to keep up with. This is a strategy coming out from uh, from Tribe that we've not really seen in this tournament, and it looks like it's going to work wonders. Bye-bye, Hondor. Yeah. <laughs> he really didn't have a chance there, did he? This... I mean, this is a completely different series. What what happened to Clash from game number one? Tribe, they've come out swinging. Hot Sauce was saying in the interview, we've gone back to the playbook, we've re rewritten how this one's going to go down, and it is paying dividends. Yeah, I think it was a completely different story in which we didn't see Tyrus make any early rotations to find kills here, and Tribe are forcing their advantage. They're onto this first base turret. Death from above connecting onto Tyrus. He's low on health, but Clash, they have that movement it feels like they want to find an engage. But they have forced a cord, but they're facing three yeah. crucibles here. It's like they want this engage, but how on earth do you find it against three crucibles? There's no way that a forced accord gets through. If it does, it's Tribe's fault that they lost the fight. Like it ain't going through! <laughs> what is <laughs> happening right before us right now? Fountain Lance 
and the damage is coming on through, but Tribe are looking pretty great. They're looking good, but Keanu absorbs the majority of the damage. Tetno, Dragon's Breath going the other way as he tried oh, to get out of that. There's too far committed in. They'll be punished. Tyrus, he's out. He's back in. Nice. Chops him down. Slice Dice as it's a two for two trade. Damn. Now, Clash, signs of life, Ooh. maybe a little rebound gold they're going their way as yeah. well as that was Max Green with four kills going down. That, for a second there, I thought we were looking at a potential end of the game. They were already knocking on the armory door up in the top lane. And then their team fight started incredibly strong for Tribe. I was worried that we could have seen an ace and just going straight into game number three right there. Tribe are playing out of their mind in this series right now. I. It's the mental fortitude that impresses me from this team. How do you lose a game that was so close and then come out so strong in game number two? I think it is, you know, Hot Sauce said it. This team is experienced. They have been here before. So you just have yeah. to tap into that experience and they've done it here. Uh, you know that every single one of these players knows exactly what they need to do. And as long as they're on the same page as a team, which it looks like they are here in game two, they're going to make it happen. The question is, will Clash have one of these miraculous comebacks? They have all of the heroes to get it done. It just feels like they're lacking in damage a little bit right now. Tetno's building into that third offensive item. If he gets that completed before this game ends, I feel like that's where they're going to start to spike. Man, these, these team fights are going to be intense. If that last one is anything to go by, this is going to be an exceptionally close matchup. Despite the early game going so in favor of Tribe, the way that Clash are positioning it feels like they still want to just go for these 5v5s. They still want to take these fights. And an important thing to mention is the fact that these three Crucibles have been built on the side of Tribe means that there isn't that much damage to start with until the two carries start to get more and more items. Actually, Tribe will be a little bit lackluster when it comes to bursting people down in the team fights. That's Clash's way in. But I, I think what if it, they can't punish it. Like the answer to that though is that they have the CP Vox, right? Yeah. So he's doing damage onto multiple heroes, and it kind of makes up for the fact that they have the other uh, teammates building these defensive items. Now, right now we have Ghost Wing, three heroes from Tribe down on the Ghost Wing. A contest from oh Tribe as Clash take the Black Claw. Two objectives being taken simultaneously on take the map. This quick. Sky looks to move on up here. Right. This is a dangerous situation to be in. Ghost Wing buff goes to Tribe. Tribe looking for the engage. Mooncloak down, but the scout camps they have vision. War treads. Looks at Kiana Denies with a flight it. company trying to hold him in place. Nice damage. Sky Sky's surge back to the dangerous position. Old school is going to go down. Can they keep him alive? He gets the Vanguard. He gets the Fountain oh and days. the Water Wall. He just got one of everything. On the Stays alive for now. Kiana and Nikoa should be left for dead. You know, he's just way too tanky. Got the Oh, Chuck's gone. Get over here. Keanu, he pulls him back. They get him down to about 10% health, but can't find the kill. Everyone lives. Nobody dies. What is happening? Dragon's Breath comes through. Clash are re-engaging onto this one. Do it is going to be one kill it? going yes, the way. Yes, they Christ, do. Three they kills. got it. Two down. Oh, that's three Black down. Four is pushing. Unbelievable. This is the story of Clash here at this Invitational. This is insane right now. Black Claw still alive. All five heroes swarming like a just uh, just a pack over here. They're into the base turret. They're into the base. Ten seconds for the respawns. Feels a little throwy to me, much. It, These guys are gonna uh, hang around. Are they gonna try and end? Are you gonna end they the game? End it right now. Yeah, they they want to go far. into the final. No, tribe has got it. That's tribe so has wrong. got it. Tribe has got oh, it right now. Tribe has got the defense. Clash overstepped themselves. Okay. They will pay for their sins. Tetno will go down as the triple kill comes ace. through for the Vox. That's an ace. Black Claw's going to go down. Tribe are still alive. What are we watching right now, Humanist? The base race the is coming base on glory through. The World Invitational <laughs> Munchables. Do you have any idea where you are right now? I have, I've lost control of everything. I don't know anything anymore. Black Claw will be taken down. Tribe hold on by the skin of their teeth. Clash over push. How Try do they do this? Things. How do they do this? I mean, time and time again, you've said it. Analysts have said it. Everybody watching is like, oh, Tribe's got the win. Oh, Clash is out of the tournament. And here they are again, knocking on the door, looking to take a 2-0 on a team that everybody thought was going to beat them. Let's just take a step back for a second here and look at the fight that just happened. Because oh, over near Ghost Swing, Clash did an absolute masterclass, holding Tribe at arm's length the entire time, not allowing the hard engage, not allowing those fights to finish. And then 
Tenno JJ held the Dragon's Breath the entire time, just Tenno waiting for the hey perfect hey. moment. Tenno hey hey Tenno making hey the hey. plays. I mean, this guy, phenomenal player. We said it before, you almost forget that he's there when there's so much talent on this Clash roster. Mooncloak, they made the decision, they want Inara, but the Spidey sense is tingling from yeah. Tyrus. He'll be able to get himself out of that one. Swing and a miss from Tribe. This series already unbelievable on this one. I mean, I don't even know where to go from here. Tribe, even though they've looked so strong in this game individually, they've looked like they've been completely in control. Clash taking that team fight, suddenly it's changed how they're posturing. They don't feel as confident. They're not walking on into these dragons like, what? comfortably anymore. What? That dude that gets up in your face, leaning forward, that's the posture Clash has right here, right now. Both teams circling around this major objective that is Ghost Swing. Vision is down from Tribe. They have scout cams down in the pit and in the brush. Clash, poking, looking for advantage. War treads in. Here we go. Mooncloak, they tried to get in position, but a nice jump Good from going, Tyrus huh? to get them back into position. Keanu, he needs to get that Polite Company down. Oh, oh no! going over the wall! They've got it! Unbelievable! Nine, nine, but Tribe, can they stay alive through this? It looks like they're going to get melted kills. down. It's two. They're going for three. Clash, Max Green's down. Can't keep this. will keep his team alive. He's done it for Old now. Old School's on the back line. Old School, he's got the damage, but they're down. It's not happening. Clash have only... No, oh, they haven't lost anybody. Fox oh. is doing it. The key to victory. The best team Old from Europe wants to make it happen. ever seen. He's going for the play. Look at no, this. Goes into the not, back line. It's not, not happening. Clash have done it. Clash will push down this mid lane and look to end this game right here, right now. Take a look at the death timers. It, we're already going to see Chuck respawning right now. T-Tigers as well. They've got five seconds end on the it. clock. This Ten is a race. seconds until more respawns come on through. Chuck is trying to make this happen. The it. bouncer's coming He's on He's bouncing in. the damage to their Tenno. He's got to land the Spitfire, the Goop, onto the Vein Crystal. The vein They're crystal. not trying to fight anybody. They're damage so on the Vein Crystal. They're juggling the damage. They're, They're dropping the flies. Have they got the Vein Crystal? It. They've got it. Clash take down Tribe, two to zero, and who would have thunk it? Our analysts going against Clash. <laughs> the world against Clash, and they rise to the occasion. Humanists, this is an unbelievable Cinderella story for Clash. Hooks oh all around. Oh my goodness. That just happened. I cannot believe my eyes right now. The final will be <laughs> Ace versus Clash. They've made it on through. Wow. Both North American teams eliminated. And all the European fans at home, if they're still up watching right now. How do you go to sleep when your team's <laughs> playing like this? I don't think I'm ever going to sleep again. <laughs> Probably not, <laughs> after the amount of energy drinks that I have put into my system. <laughs> and Tribe, commiserations. They played exceptionally across the course of today. I thought that they were going to make it all the way through the lower but bracket, still good the way sports, they were playing. You know? yeah. look, at it, look at these guys, that's a respect full respect and they got to be so happy for Clash because they've been there every step of the way. They've been there at every unified championship where every European team got put down. All right, there were a couple members from G2 that tasted victory. Yeah. You know, uh, but that was like one round into the tournament. Completely different story. And now we've just, this is the first time in history and European team has taken two series internationally. And now Nova have a sigh of relief. They're like, yes, we weren't the only team to lose to EU in this tournament. Uh, Digon, talk to me. What on earth did we just witness?